I was fortunate to play at a very good basketball school. And then you go away and coach and you think that, well, you know, if I ever had the chance to coach there at Maryland, it'd be great. But I never thought I'd have the opportunity to come back and coach at Maryland because uh, you very rarely get the opportunity to do that. Chipkins on fire today! What will be the first things that you do to turn this program around? Three hip. Oh, takes it himself, makes it, he's fouled. And I think we can get great people in here to play, and I think there, there are people that everybody connected with Maryland will be proud of. Rhodes gets free at the other end. His layup is good. He got away from everybody. For the homecoming coach, the challenge was to build for his old school a new team. A team to bring back a basketball program that was once one of the best in the country. That's one of the things once we got off the sanctions that we tried to do recruiting wise is to make sure the people that we brought in here were good people because I knew it would be tough. And uh, even with talent, uh, you're not going to uh, catch the people that we had to catch in our league to move up in the ACC without having good people. The tough core of his new team came from right next door, from the playgrounds of Washington, D.C. Dwayne Simpkins and John DeRose, and we all decided down at Nike camp that we wanted to come to Maryland and try to make, you know, put Maryland back on the map. I just had a feeling that, hey, I mean, if we all got together, I mean, a couple of very good players, we could you know, hopefully bring that magic back. And the players came, dreaming of the old magic of other seasons, drawn by a coach on a crusade. The road back began with the battle for the nation's capital. Maryland against Georgetown for their first game in 13 years. Local legends from the playgrounds of D.C. faced off in a battle that became a war. A war on national television against a nationally ranked team. But we wanted to, you know, put it in a situation where, you know, Georgetown wouldn't be the dominant team in the area no more. We wanted to come here and, and change things around and just create a whole different atmosphere. Very quick, nice pass. But the Maryland sophomores brought new weapons from out of town. Freshman Keith Booth from Baltimore. And from Norfolk, freshman Joe Smith. The, the fast break style of play, I think, is important to them. The, the pressure defense is tough on players because you really work twice as hard because you're, you're covering twice as much floor space. At the same time, when they see it can break loose a lot of things offensively for them by their defense, then they buy into it pretty well. And, uh, Williams' pressure defense would take the war for Washington into overtime. That game just meant that, you know, hey, we can play with any and everybody if we really put our minds to it. You know, every, every player that game, I mean, even the guys that didn't play, they, you might as well say that they were out there playing too because they just threw their hearts out there. Curtis Schultz comes in to apply some pressure at the inbound pass, and it's 83-82, Georgetown. Four here's, corners. Here's Brown to the right side to Millen. Down to 25 seconds to play. Stolen on the play. Good hands by Schultz. Schultz knocks it away, and Simpkins comes up with it, and the Terrapins call a time with 14 seconds to play in overtime. They've got the ball and a chance to win. Coach wanted me to try to get the ball to Joe, if possible. But uh, in my mind, I was just, I wasn't saying I was going to take the shot myself or I was going to dish the ball off or anything. Uh, after he said what play we're going to run, I just kind of drifted off my own little world a little bit and just thinking about, you know, what the play might be like. I went in there with, a, with an open mind whether I was going to dish the ball off or lay it up. And when they closed down on Joe and I got the shot. Simpkins makes the move. Simpkins himself. Simpkins got it. 3.5 seconds left. I was saying to myself, well, you know, I had shot like 2 for 10 or something like that up until that time, so I was like, dang, I needed that last bucket to try to get a percentage up a little bit. I felt, <laughs> felt that, was the key, that was the key moment because, I mean, you know, any game is up for grabs, you know, so when he made that layup and uh, time just kept ticking, then I felt it was over. Here comes Millen. He didn't get it off. Maryland 
pulls off the upset of 15th ranked Georgetown. Yes. Oh, what a big win for Gary Williams. What a terrific win for him. The Terps are back. This young, vibrant club fought their way back from a 10-point deficit at halftime. These freshmen and sophomores have really distinguished themselves. I thought that game was really important. And not that it was Georgetown, but it was just that somebody was ranked at the time, and we beat them coming out of the gate. And so then they got confidence of what we were trying to do offensively, defensively, and as a team. And I think that really bonded us together that game, too. We, we were a very close team after that. I really started making some goals after we beat Georgetown. I saw how good we really could be and everything. And... Um, after that, I just said that uh, I always told a lot of people that I think we can go as far as we want to go, whether that be the, the Sweet 16 or Final Four, it didn't matter. You know, we could go as far as we wanted to go. A new team now thought it could challenge the best teams in the best college conference in the country. For Maryland, the new season began with one of their toughest tests, an ACC road game and a Georgia Tech team now nationally ranked. Here's Rhodes for three. He bangs it in. I shot the ball pretty well coming into the Georgia, the Georgia Tech game, and um, I mean, it seemed like everybody was on fire the first half, and I mean, I mean that was that was a great, great opener for us. Against Georgia Tech, against the ACC, Maryland would bring one of the youngest starting teams in the country. I think my quickness is my strength. You know, um, guys, I weigh about 20 or 30 pounds, and so I have to use my quickness down there, and um, I think that's the biggest strength I have. How far could a team built for the future go in this year's ACC? At the beginning of the season, I said, we'll get to the Sweet 16. And we'll finish fourth or fifth in the conference. And uh, a lot of, you know, reporters laughed at me. And they thought, well, okay, yeah, y'all get to the NITs, maybe. Well, I think the Terrapins have served notice on the rest of the league that they're young, but they're ready to go. The word was going out, and the fans were coming back. A team built for tomorrow was arriving today. From across the state, fans, remembering yesterday, came storming home to Cole Fieldhouse. Well, the fans of Maryland, I mean, they're really incredible. I mean, and when you are standing in that tunnel and you're looking there and you, you're looking at everybody on the team, I mean, you just look them in their eyes and, I mean, you know you're going to go out there and you know you've got to play a team. But then, you, I mean, you do hear the band and you hear the crowd and your adrenaline just starts pumping. building because they're all smiles again in College Park. Why not? Maryland now has turned into Gary Land. You know it's a big game because you feel the noise. You know, it actually hits you as you walk out of the tunnel. And... You know, they, they bought tickets this year on hope, on faith that we would be good. And uh, it, it was just a tremendous feeling. And Cole Fieldhouse now is one of the tougher places to play in the ACC, without a doubt. In a field house where the memories still live, where McMillan and Elmore and John Lucas first put Maryland in the top ten, where Buck Williams and Albert King were all Americans, where Lenny Bias and Walt Williams played to sell out crowds, Gary Williams brought a team that would try for its own place in Maryland history. Well, I always grew up, you know, as a Maryland Turpin fan, you know, growing up watching guys like Len Bias and Keith Gatton and all those guys, you know, throwing a Alley hoop pass and everything, you know, always decide, you know, hey, I want to do that one day. But could a team this young, driven by their own dreams of destiny, bring a basketball program back so fast and so far? They won eight times in the ACC. They won at home. They won on the road running up one of the best road records in the conference. 
They won national ranking for the first time in eight years. For Joe Smith, National Freshman of the Year, chosen by the U.S. Basketball Writers Association of America. And first team, all ACC. For all the other starters, honorable mention as freshmen and sophomores on the all ACC team. And for all of them, after beating Virginia, for the starters and subs and fans, a fourth place finish in the ACC, the highest Maryland finish since 1984. CBS Sports presents the NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show, sponsored by Pizza Hut. The number seven seed, St. Louis, will take on Maryland. Gary Williams' remarkable job of rebuilding that program with the Terrapins. The Terrapins, the 10th seed. Oh, my. Oh, oh. A team of freshmen and sophomores and juniors had opened a new season for Gary Williams' old school. Everybody's just been eager, just waiting. I think the best memory I have is seeing Dwayne Simpkins cry when we got the NCAA tournament bid and then seeing Coach Williams break down, too. Coach, a lot of tears in the locker room, man. I, and it looks like you, just right now, the emotion is swelling. I mean, you just describe it, how you feel inside. Well, you know, I, I think you had to be here all five years uh, to appreciate today. And uh, I think the uh, players just did a great job of dedicating themselves to, to have the best possible year. In the madness of March for the first time since 1988. Let the madness begin. This is the first game of the tournament. For Maryland, the first score, the first win. In the second round, for a whole team playing beyond its years, the greatest comeback of its comeback season. I don't know. I was sitting on the bench, <laughs> down by 10, and I was just looking at Matt Rada. And Donnie Judd, and we're, we're, I mean, we were just like, we got to do something. And then with Mario Lucas, he, he just came in, and he hit, he hit a three. And then he got a three-point play. And then, I mean, X scored. Joe Smith hit a three. And it was just, we couldn't miss. The great play that is a great play is one that changes the momentum of the game. See, I like what both teams are trying to do with the penetration. Out the bucket. Get past Kellogg to shut him off. 20 on the shot clock. Hit for three. Maryland has the lead. Smith. Chris it out to for three. It's a great feeling to see everything click. It doesn't happen for any team very often, but for about seven or eight minutes there, that, that's as good as we could ever hope to play. As you saw today, um, these are a special group of people. Uh, Dwayne Simpkins, uh, x Ree Hip, Johnny Rhodes, and Mario Lucas came to Maryland when we weren't any good. They, they took the challenge to come there. They decided that they could make it a good basketball program. And then they helped us recruit Keith Booth, Joe Smith, uh, Nick Bosnick, Matt Kavori. That's, that's what I feel about this team. Coach Williams, he's like a father to us. And, um, you know, it's all a part.
a Midwest somewhere, you feel good about the school all of a sudden, and um, that's something that you know I think sports can do for a university.